Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Reverend Ramona Guadalupe. This ministry comes to you from the Hestaba House Church Ministry and the Promises of God. It is a bilingual ministry, I pray. For those who are watching this program from Burlington, Vermont, and throughout the world, I pray that you'll be blessed by the word that God has for you today. Let's take this moment and read the word of the Lord this moment. Relax, put all that stuff that you are thinking about, um, all the chaos and all the noise that is around you. Let's take this moment and give God the glory. And the word of the Lord says, on verse 16 from the book of Revelation chapter 22, and the word says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. The spirit and the bride says, come and let the one who hears says, come and let the one who is thirsty come and let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life, the word for, from the Lord for the people of God. Today is a day that many in the United States are celebrating Father's Day. And that is the focus today. But we're going to be looking at what is Father? What is Father's Day? And who implemented Father's? So let's take this moment in the book of Psalm, which many of you already know. The books of Psalm 100. Let's go there. And it says, this is David. David was a mighty king, as many of you already know. And if you don't know, he was one of the kings in Jerusalem for the Israelites. And the word goes in Psalm 100, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, and worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is good. It is he who made us and we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generation. Let's take this moment and be in prayer. Let's bow our head. And if you don't know Christ, let's take this moment of silence as I pray. Blessed Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I give you thanksgiving for this day, this day that you have made. In some places it's rainy, some places it's dry, some places it's sunny and pleasant. But Father God, we give you thanksgiving in all circumstances because you made this day possible that we woke up this morning and that we're able to see our family, some of us. We are able to remember the love that you have for us in spite of what's going on, blessed Father. I ask of you, blessed Father, to touch the hearts of those who are listening from Burlington, Vermont and throughout the world and around the nations. Blessed Father, that you receive all the honor as I stand between your people, blessed Father, I pray that let the words that I speak to your people and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, blessed Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Te do las gracias hoy, Señor, para este día, por tu amor y tu semericordia. Algunas partes de diferentes mundos, hay situaciones, Señor, que tú le das el sol y los días amables y los días secos. Y los días de lluvia. Y con ti eso, Señor, te damos la gloria, el amor, porque tú eres Dios. Te doy las gracias, Señor. Deja que todo lo que yo hablo, que sea amable para ti, para ti, Señor. Y todo lo que salga de mi corazón es para tu gloria, Señor. Te doy las gracias. En el nombre de Jesús de Nazaret. Amén. So today is, many of you already know, and throughout the nations in the United States are celebrating Father's Day. What is Father's Day? 
It is a subject that is very touching for a lot of youth, whether you're here in the United States, whether you're from around the world. I understand and I know and I have witnessed there have been fathers who haven't been very nice. There have been fathers that abuse their own children. There have been fathers who murder their own children, but there are fathers who are good fathers and they're doing the best they can under the circumstances, especially in, in this 21st century that we're living. There are fathers who already left that are not beside you. There are fathers who are homeless. There are fathers who work hard for their family to support them. There are fathers who abandon their family and their children. And there are fathers who just neglected, who children came into the world and have been neglected, whether economic situation or just plain abandoned them. But I want you to know that being a father is have been a great privilege that God has ordained. In the book of Revelation, in the book of Exodus, let's go to the book of Exodus. It's one of the commandments that God has implemented for his people. And it's the fifth commandment that Jehovah has implemented told Moses to give it to the people. And there's a reason for that. Because being a father or a parent is supposed to mirror the heavenly father. In the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, and the word of God says, may it just may, it's just very simple. And it's the fifth commandment. And it says, honor your father and your mother so that, the, that, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. This is a commandment that God gave to Moses to give to his people, the Israelites, when they came out of Egypt. God gave them rules and regulations. It reminds me of my own parents. My father worked very hard. He raised a very large family. He dedicated himself into providing for his family. That was his assignment. He understood that. He knew that from the very beginning. Where did he get that from? Because his parents pass that on to him. But not every father is that way. Now, some of you might say, oh, that's the Old Testament. But you know something? Jesus Christ did not come to destroy the word of God. Matter of fact, in the book, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 15. And Jesus mirrored the words of the living God in the Greek text, in the Greek text, which is the New Testament. And Jesus Christ mirrored those words. In Matthew chapter 15, I'm reading from the NIV Bible, the New International Version, and it says, and he goes on to say, and Jesus replied in verse 3, Jesus replied, why did you break the commandment of God for the sake of your traditions? For God says, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father and mother should be put to death. But he goes on, he says, for you say that if anyone declares what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, and they are not to honor their father and mother with it. Though you mummify the word of God for the sake of your tradition, and he goes on to say in verse 7, you hypocrites, I say I was right when he prophesied about you. So here is the word of the living God that Jesus did not come to destroy it. In matter of fact, he amplified it even more so And the word of God. Beloved, and those who are listening from around the world, many times the word of God could be pretty harsh, but but it's for a reason. It's to shake us up, beloved. It's to God to shake us up and to remind you, you know, our parents here in the United States, when we cross in the streets and throughout the world, we advise our children to look both ways because you have drivers who are 
either thinking about something else and they're not paying attention to pedestrians. And there are countries that drivers has the right of way and pedestrian is secondary. So either way, when we come into these situations, we have to be aware that it was for our safety to keep us protected. Being a father is an honor position. You know, I advise parents that it's not for you to become your, your children's buddy or friends. It is an honor position for you to guide them and to teach them the way of God because it's to keep you safe. So some of you have suffered in the hands of your parents. But in spite of it all, let me give you an example. There are parents who have abused their children in all different manners, and you still have pain in your heart about what they have done. And it's understandable, and God understands that too. But in spite of it all, that they have done horrendous things, whenever, if they are in a nursing home, which United States, unfortunately, put parents in a nursing home, if your parent, your father is homeless out in the street, if your, if your parent, your father is a drug addict, is addicted to drug or alcohol, we still have to honor them. If they come to you and ask you for money, you give it to them. You give it to them knowing, see, God knows your pain and he knows what you have gone through with your parents. He knows that. He knows that your father has abandoned you and he probably might come 20 years later into your life. And then you are still angry. How dare you come now? We still provide for them. Because beloved, let me give you some understanding. When we're doing these things, we're not doing it for them. We are doing it for our heavenly father, Jehovah and our Lord Jesus Christ. We are watching over, we are doing, and we're pleasing God. God is the one behind the scene. Yes, they have done horrendous things. Yes, they have molested you. Yes, they continue to do bad things, and some of them are homeless. Some of them have pity, because if you have an understanding, part of being mature is having an understanding why a person have done what they have done. It doesn't give it doesn't give them any. It's not making any excuse for them. But what you're actually doing, you're honoring God when they come to you after twenty or twenty five years being away out of your life, and you have suffered. You and your mother have suffered. You have been abandoned in the uh, foster home and so on. If they ever come to you for help, you still have an obligation in God's eyes to help them out the best that you know how. If they need a place to stay, it doesn't mean that you welcome them into your new life. What it means is you provide for them somehow. So beloved, God wants us to honor our parents. And when we do that, we are doing it for God himself, our creator and our Lord Jesus. You know, the beginning of this sermon, I talked about we give God thanksgiving and we praise him. That's how we glorify God. Let me give you another example. And I'm not talking about fathers who violate the oath of God because they are fathers that actually murder their own daughters and sons. I'm not talking about that because God one day is going to hold the God. They're going to have to answer to God. For an example, in my ministry and in my lifetime, I could tell when a child has honored their parents. And, and let me give you an example. And I'm not talking about those who do things underhanded or crooked. No, I'm talking about those who actually honor God. Adults who honor God, there's something, something about them. They are very successful in life. I'm not talking about those who, who, who does corruptions and, and so on. No, I'm talking about honoring God. And I could tell 
when those who honor their parents, they tend to have good manners. They tend to have respect towards humanity. They tend to be a good standard by the citizen and the children are respectful because that parent understand the commandment that God has given to them. And they have been passed on from their parents and so on. So when you see a successful person, pull the curtain open and look behind what has this person been successful? I'm not talking about abusing, um, uh, monetary and, and pushing others and bring them down so you can be up, up elevated. No. Are those who are God has blessed because they have done God's will and they have uplifted others in their path because they have respected and honor their parents. In the United States, I have gone to nursing home. They are parents who are dying in nursing home by themselves because they have been neglected. I mean, what is with that? I understand that children, adult children need time to, to, to do what they need to do if they need to go on a vacation. I could see a little respite for them. But to keep them there year after year, we have done an injustice. You might say, but pastor, he has been a drunk addict, an abuser, and all that. Yes, and that could be so. But when you treat them with respect and you're honoring them, in spite of what they have done, you're doing it for God himself, the creator. And God will remove all that bitterness from your heart. God will help you through everything in your life. It doesn't mean that problems are not going to come. But what it means is that God will help you to deal with them. Beloved, let's start honoring our abusive father, our abusive um, homeless father. And those who have abandoned us and those... Yes, it hurts, and you don't want to have nothing to do with them. But if they ever come to you for help, provide that with help. Because you're doing it for the living God. Because this is the requirement that God has set. And those who do not take care of their family, and then, uh, and then you, you say that you love God. It's like, hello, how could you love God that you haven't even seen? But the one that is before you and that you know of, beloved, let's do things right. And then I speak to the fathers out there. You have a responsibility, beloved. God has given you this wonderful privilege to help society, to be a role model. And you might say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You are a woman. Yes. Keep in mind, the one that brought Jesus to this world that God used, it was a woman. Keep in mind that the first woman that preached the gospel of the resurrection, it was a woman. And they didn't believe her. You have a responsibility to society. There have been many abuse. Those who are in power have abused your position. So I could understand why society don't want to just say, forget about it, but do it because God has given you that position to be a good role model. Go visit your children, write to them. If you are afraid, God will give you the courage to do so. If you have abandoned them, God will give you the courage to go and visit them, to call them. If you are homeless, God will give you the courage to build again a relationship. Because that's what you're made, of, made for. To have a relationship with your children and to love them. It is God gave them to you. These are roses that God gave you. It was an investment. God loves you to this day. Yes, you have messed up and God knows it. And we come to God and we ask God, forgive us for my sin. And if you don't know Jehovah, if you don't know our Lord Jesus Christ, because Jesus is our savior in this world, without him, there is nobody that's going to save you. 
It doesn't, you might say, oh, but I believe in God. Yes, okay, that's a good start. But if you don't have Jesus in your life, there is no other savior. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the only savior in this world. And what do you do? You might say, but pastor, reverend, how do I do this? Well, I don't have the power. I'm just only a representative, the co-worker of Jesus Christ. You prayed and you asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and to forgive you for your sins. And once you do that, Jesus, and then you get to know him, you read his words. What he does, is he starts to clean you. He starts to clean your heart. He starts to, like he told the man that was paralyzed, pick up your mat and walk. And he did. And people couldn't believe it. It's in the gospel that Jesus says, pick up your mat and walk. So I'm telling you fathers out there, pick up your mat and walk. Because you are not junk. God loves you. It doesn't matter who you are right now. I mean, when I say it doesn't matter, it matters. Uh, doesn't matter if you're homeless, if you've been a drug addict, if you are in prison because you committed a crime. Jehovah God is able to forgive you through our Lord Jesus Christ. But he needs to clean our hearts because we have made a mess in this world. Not only the United States, but throughout the world, we have made a mess. And I applaud those fathers who are doing the best that they can. Our Lord Jesus Christ will be there to help you through difficult times. Believe me, I have seen it, I have witnesses. God is always there. When we cry out to him and we pray to him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jehovah God is able to just, I'm here, I'm here. So let's take this moment and honor that position of honor that God has given to you, fathers. Bless you. I bless you. Come to Jesus and ask him to help you. Yes, and especially those who have been financially blessed, you are able to help other fathers and take them into your arms and, and show them the ways of God. Not about macho man or machismo or masculinity. No. That's not the example that Jesus taught. In a book in the Gospel of John, throughout the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it shows that Jesus is tenderness. He wanted to wrap us around like a mother hen and guide us to the way of our Father, Jehovah. So let's take this moment and be in prayer. Bless the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for your people, Father, near and far, especially fathers who are going through quite a bit, Father, those who are homeless, those who are in prison. Father God, those fathers who are trying to do the best that they can for their family. I pray for the fathers who have abandoned their family. I pray for the fathers who abuse their families too, their children. I pray that you help them, Father, that they will come back and pick up their mat and be healed and able to walk because nothing is impossible for you, blessed Father. So I bless the fathers this day. Jehovah God is the Father. He gave us Jesus. Father God, we remember and we know. And you are the Father that cares for all of us. As your co-worker, blessed Father, Watch over them. Protect them from any harm. Show them, blessed Father Jehovah, your way through our Lord Jesus, our God, and our Savior. Amen. Until God brings back together next week, may the Lord be with you. Y el corazón de Dios te es contigo. Y la semericordia y la gracia. Hasta la semana que viene. Amen.